Well, we're still in the grip of uh, our heat wave. 30 degree temperatures at the moment. And uh, I've put the garden sprinkler on the 80 watt solar panel again. And uh, on the battery I've got this 100 watt mains light bulb with a inverter down in there because I need to keep the voltage of the battery down. It's 12.6 uh, at the moment. And that's because uh, I'm able to put a fair bit of power from the uh, MPPT rig uh, from the 80 watt solar panel into the battery. So let's have a look at where we are. Now I've slightly rearranged things because I wanted to bring the graphics display into the main display area. There didn't seem to be much sense it being in a separate display area or on a separate screen. So I've shoved it up in the top right hand corner and I've put a little marker on there so as well as drawing the dot it draws a little marker line. I might go and get the um, magnifying glass in a minute. But anyway, let's look at PWM. At 100%, we're getting about 50 watts. And you can see that the uh, dot with the marker is right at the top, but a little way to the left. If I start bringing that up, that moves to the right, but still along the top. So we've got high current, and the voltage is coming up of the panel. Panel voltage is now 18. 17 there and max power is right at the knee of the curve so it drops back as you go across the top goes up as you go towards the knee and then as you come down to the right power drops away unfortunately the uh, little marker thing I've drawn means that it seems to rub the curve out when you go left to right but it draws it when you go right to left but you get a sense of um, the IV curve there. So max power is sort of up here, round about uh, the knee of the curve. But of course I'm still having major problems with the uh, current sensor. It's extremely jittery, so it's very difficult to track uh, max power using a sort of perturb and observe. Let's just get that back in the shot. Because it's so noisy, it's hard to see where max power is. It's going to be about there. And in fact, I found myself almost watching the um, the graphic curve and putting that dot uh, as far up into the right-hand corner as I can. And it did make me wonder whether that might be um, a mechanism for uh, for finding maximum power. So I've been doing a little bit of reading on. Uh, MPPT algorithms and it seems that the two most common are P&O, perturb and observe, which is just what I'm doing here. You do a bit of perturbing and a bit of observing and you just look for the maximum watts on the watts bar graph out there. Um, but there's another one that seems uh, to be quite common and that's uh, incremental conductance. And at first I thought what on earth is that? So um, I wanted to get an idea about conductance. Well, conductance is the opposite of resistance. So where R equals V over I, conductance is I over V. Um, so just under the MPPT on my display there, I'm actually showing the conductance. S is for Siemens, S-I-E-M-E-N-S. -E -E That's what conductance is measured in, apparently. It's not a very commonly used unit. Um, and you can see if I go to 100% PWM, that goes to a maximum of about 0.3. If I start coming down, that drops down. And of course, if I go way down, so that there's virtually no current, um, the conductance goes to virtually zero. Now, at the moment, it's not really telling me a lot. I can't really um, gauge whether that's helping. I'd need to do more reading on incremental conductance. It's um, mathematically more complex than perturb and observe, but um, this is where I think we need to be going next. It's looking at algorithms. Do we go for a simple perturb and observe? Just keep moving the thing around, watching the power graph and saying, OK, it went down. You know, if it goes down, you go the other way. If it goes up, you keep going in the same direction. Now, perturb and observe, um, does create oscillations because you're constantly perturbing and observing and oscillating around the maximum power point like this. 
Um, incremental conductance apparently is a bit more stable, but uh, a lot more work needs to be do done on um, understanding these algorithms and trying to choose which one I want to go for. But um, I think pretty much first and foremost I've got to try and remove this jitter. You can see, I really need the magnifying glass here, but you can see that um, the current value is all over the place. It's hugely jittery. So I need to try and remove some of that jitter, but I think part of the reason for that is that um, this current sensor, the ACS712, is measuring about, I don't know, 10 times a second, something like that. And of course, sometimes when it measures, this MOSFETs can be on, and other times it's going to be off. So um, sometimes it's going to get a reading where there's a, a short, short path here, and others where there's an open circuit. And I think that may, may be where some of this uh, noise, this jitter, is coming from. How I would synchronise those, well, at the moment I couldn't possibly, because the oscillator here is completely asynchronous to the um, Arduino here, which is making the readings. So um, going to have to think carefully about how to uh, remove the noise. I mean, it may be just a case of using digital filtering techniques. And I have put very, very simple uh, first stage of averaging into the reading of current there. And it did calm it down a little bit, but it also introduces delays. It, it has negative effects as well. So I might look at other digital filtering techniques. There are some filtering systems based on median and mode and other statistical filtering techniques which um, may be possible to employ. But anyway, that's where we are at the moment. That noise incidentally is the uh, inverter fans just come on because 100 watts is getting the inverter quite hot. And as I say, it's probably 25 degrees out here now and heading for 30, which is very nice of course, can't complain. Um, so that's where we are with the MPPT rig at the moment. You've probably noticed I've got um, more capacitors. I put a big thousand mic directly across the solar panel at the point where I'm measuring voltage but another thousand mic and uh, just to finish I've got the magnifying glass it's not brilliant but I'll just do a little bit of winding the PWM backwards and forwards just get a flavor for how the perturb and observe is working Yes, I'm going to have to get a better close-up lens system and some method of fixing the camera for when I'm doing this. Anyway, that's it for now.